We're so glad that you tuned in. And uh, tonight I would just want to speak to you from my heart about how do you win someone to Jesus? And, uh, you know, the, the scripture tells us, Jesus tells us that uh, his meat is to do the will of the Father. And that will would be that he would give living water to those that are dry and thirsty, give everlasting life to those that are lost and dying. And that it says that Jesus said, I came to seek and to save the lost. And when Jesus laid his life down for us, he put his arms out and as it were, built a bridge with a cross. From right here, you have a person that's lost, they may be a very good person, a lot of good characteristics, a kind person, a person that even believes part of the Bible, believes in God, but has never seen their need for a Savior. And they're living condemned, and some of them know it, and some of them don't know it. And you want to bring them from death and life and from sin, from, from death rather, and condemnation and sin to life and to hope and to eternal life and so with God in heaven and so Jesus Christ he went to the cross and he died so God sent his son and he laid his life down and so I want to talk to you how do we bring salvation to people how do we share Jesus with people how do we get people truly saved and in our culture that we live in, uh, it's the same as before, uh, but it takes us not being caught up with our living and our life to where we live, everything we live for is the pleasures of this world and the things that money can buy and, and uh, enjoying the good life and the good food and the good entertainment and, and sports and so forth like that. Um, there was someone I saw posted that said, uh, hey, uh, I, you know, if I, the sports is no longer on, and I, 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 cut, I, you know, I'm talking to my my wife, and I actually find out that she's here, and she's she's a nice person, and uh, so because you know, so many times we watch life happen, we're not talking, we're not we're in relationship with people, and for you to be Jesus to people, you have to be in relationship with them, and in a sense, if we're taking up our cross and following Jesus, like the Lord Jesus himself told us to do, we put our hands out. We make the bridge. Jesus made the bridge when he laid his life down that we were dead and we were sinners and we were able through Jesus to come to life and eternal life and heaven. And he made that bridge. You've seen the picture drawn from the gulf and the depths of sin and lostness to a cross through Jesus Christ to life up on the mountaintop uh, receiving from God with a great hope and no despair. And so we have to be that bridge. We have to be the cross bearers. We have to be Jesus to people. And uh, Jesus died to restore a relationship to the Father. Guess what? You and I, we must die to ourselves, take up our cross to help others restore their relationship to the Father, to go from death to life. And I want to share with you some thoughts about how we do that. The first scripture I'd like to share with you is the idea of, of us being sinners. Now, the world doesn't like that. They don't like the word sin or sinners. Um, as long as we believe and we appear to be good and be kind to other people, then we're all good to go. It's kind of like that's the standard. There's no more holy standard or biblical standard. The standard is just don't, don't offend anyone and don't be mean. Don't be unkind. So sometimes speaking truth, sometimes reading a scripture comes across as mean, it comes across as bullying. But the truth is, until a person that's lost sees and knows they're lost, they won't cry out to be saved, to be found. They have to first turn from sin. They need to see them, their, sin, their sin. The law was given that we could see that within ourselves we have, we're powerless to obey or fulfill the law the, to the letter, the detail of the law. There's no way that within our own strength we can ever do that. But that's what grace does. But the problem is, in our society, we have grace being defined as 
something that's weak. It's just a, a definition word that says it's okay that you sin. Uh, Jesus died for that. He's got that. Don't worry. It's no longer a conversion. It's no longer Holy Spirit born again from, from death to life. Old things passed away. All things become new. Uh, grace is actually a power word. It's a word that when Holy Spirit of God goes into our heart and invades our heart, it changes our heart. It's a power word. And we have to understand that if we're going to win the lost because we have to bring them to a place where they know they're lost. So that's first, building relationships. If you don't lay your life down and love others and you don't get into relationship with others that are lost, there's no way you can speak to them. You win a right to be heard by your love. Someone said, well, truth, truth with no love is religion uh, at its worst. And love with no truth is humanism at its worth, worse, rather. But when you put love and truth together and you take truth and love to someone, that love will open the heart's door of a sinner to receive truth that the Holy Spirit puts. The fruit of the Spirit is love. But also the Spirit is the Spirit of truth. So it has to be both. And today in, this, in our culture, we have so many pastors and churches that they don't want to offend anybody. Their directive is don't never make someone go away feeling bad and they won't speak to sin. And so we, you're a sinner and I'm a sinner. We're born sinners. And that looks different for all of us. Every area of our life is born sinful. We're angry. We're selfish. We're messed up with uh, even our sensitivity in our lives, uh, being oversensitive, not sensitive, uh, being uh, uh, greedy, uh, being uh, uh, wanting to be someone, the pride of life, and, and just every area, we are sinners. Uh, we're born that way. And uh, we can't change that about ourselves. We can't change our own heart. We can't change the way we were born. That's when we see that, we see we're lost. And if we don't believe Romans 3.23 that says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, then if we don't see ourselves as sinners, we don't know we need a Savior. And that Savior isn't just to, to wash sin away. The Savior is to change our heart towards sin so that our heart doesn't desire sin like it did before. I've been saying this recently, and I, I want to say it again. I want everyone to hear this. If you're going to win someone to Jesus, they need to understand that when Jesus saves them, they save them from their selfish viewpoint, from their self-life, from their earthly perspective that wants to get all the gusto in this life, that they all have their eyes open to see what God sees. They have an eternal perspective, the things that matter, the things money can't buy, death can't take away. If you're going to change someone's heart, you've got to also change how they feel about life. And, uh, and, you know, so many people, you know, a lot of people, the humanistic viewpoint is, you know, you know, just feel good about everything. It doesn't matter what a person does, there's no truth involved. But the third thing, you want to see life through his eyes and feel that things the way God feels, but the third thing that God does when he changes you, when he invades your heart with grace, with power of grace, being born by the Spirit, helps you think the way he thinks. Because the Bible says there's a way that seems right to man in our thinking, in our human thinking, that's born sinful, but that way leads to destruction. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end leads to destruction. So our thinking has to be changed. God's ways are not our ways. His are higher ways. His thoughts are not our, our thoughts. And when we're born again, when we uh, uh, are saved from the power of sin that holds us captive, that, that gives us desires that are selfish and sinful, when we're saved from that, suddenly we see differently, we think differently, we feel differently, and that's what those spirit work can do. But until you, until you can get a person out of loving them and building a relationship with them to see themselves that they're a sinner in need of a savior, that they can't fix themselves, that, they, that what they do is not okay with God, that the Bible is truth, you know, and, and it will convict, the truth of the word will convict them to realize that the spirit of God, the sword of the spirit, 
the word of God, the sword of the spirit, the spirit will convict their hearts and convince them of who Jesus is, will reveal to them their need of a savior. And when they call on Jesus, the spirit of that same spirit that calls people, that draws a man, will invade their heart and save them, not only from the penalty of sin, but the power of sin. Sin has no more dominion over us. So why would Jesus say, go and sin no more? Why would he say, be holy as I'm holy, if it's okay to just have a sin eraser in Jesus? And grace is nothing but a definition of saying the blood of Jesus cleanses us, but it doesn't change us. No, sir, salvation changes a person. And it starts with us knowing this verse, and a verse you need to know if you want to reach someone and point them to Jesus, is that you first need to show them all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And then while we were sinners in Romans 5, 8, and it says this, um, well, let's start with 5-6. Five, five, While we were sinners, still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good, a good man someone will dare even to die. But God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet, yet sinners, we were in our sin, Christ died for us. So you show them. Hey, look, Romans 3, 23, we've all sinned. I've sinned, you sin, and we can never earn our way to heaven. We're not good enough. And that we have to cry out to Jesus to come in, to change my sinful heart. Not just erase sin, but change me from the power and dominion of sin. And then to show them, hey, look, God wants this for you. He's going to do it for you. Because while you were still a sinner, Christ died for you. He knew that. He invaded uh, he went into the pits of hell himself and got the keys of uh, death, hell, and the grave, and, and he bought it for you. And his same spirit, that God's spirit that raised you from the dead is going to invade your heart and raise you up that you're born again by the spirit. That's the power of grace. He's not left you like you were. You're not frustrated and weak, uh, but yet somehow defined as a Christian because Jesus' blood was shed on the cross for you and you believe it. No, salvation is a relationship with God where you cry out to him, call on him because you know you're a sinner and you can't fix that problem. And only Jesus can change your heart, your mind, and your feelings, your thoughts. Only Jesus can change you and make you brand new. What does it say? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Put off the old. Put on the new. That's the power of the Spirit the, with the Word of God, with Christ in us, the hope of glory to make us brand new. To win someone to Christ, you have to build that bridge by laying your life down and loving them. That's why I like the, the, the interest groups. You know, so many Christians, after a few years, they have no, no friends that don't know Jesus. And I believe it's important that we reach out across the way to our neighbors, our coworkers, and even the relatives that don't really know, and just love and love and love on them and and just live life and let them see your light. If you're not Jesus to them, that your life that is strong with light and salt and that is godly and holy and it looks different than what the world looks like, will show them. They'll say there's something different about that person. The way they talk, the way they think, their attitudes, the way they work, everything, there's something different. This will open the door for an opportunity to share your word of testimony. That, you know, look, I was a sinner just like you. We all sin. Romans 3.23, but good news, Romans 5, 6, 7, and 8, verse 8 particularly, that while we were sinners, God sent Christ to die for us. And then to understand that Romans 6.23 says this, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the NIV, it says it this way, verse 22, but now having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit resulting in sanctification. I wanted to bring that word up because many people in the church don't know what different words mean. And many people in the world get confused about salvation. You know, you're not, you don't get saved when you get sanctified. Sanctification happens after that. Sanctification is to process of becoming holy. To be sanctified is, is being holy. And Jesus prayed for his followers to sanctify them with God. He prayed to his Father, Father, sanctify them by thy word, by the word. Your word is truth. 
So what is sanctification? It's the process that happens when they come to Christ. And Romans 6.22 talks about being sanctified. And so that's the hard work of discipling. You've built the relationship and you help them. You have a, a, a newborn baby in the faith. You don't just leave them at the altar. You have to disciple them. You have to invest in them. You have to teach them. And I encourage you to win and teach and disciple someone. You don't want to just convert someone to a church that they come and are part of the Christian club. It can happen so easy and devolve to that. And I was just interviewing some missionary candidates and one of the people that was helping me interview asked two of the candidates what does the gospel mean and they gave the wrong answer and I'm thinking does our church know what the word gospel is or the word means or what the gospel is well the gospel is mean the word gospel simply means good news and the good news is when Jesus came to earth he he came to to uh, save us he came to save us from ourselves and from our sin and to set us free from the power of sin. And uh, so what does that look like? Well, the gospel, when you preach that, well, remember on Christmas, great glad tidings, great joy, you know, good news, Jesus Christ is born. That's the good news, that's gospel, Jesus, the Jesus story, that he came, was born of a virgin, that he lived a sinless life, that he was buried in the ground for three days, he rose again, he appeared to many for 40 days. He ascended in front of a whole crowd of people right in their eyes as recorded not only in the Bible but history. And he ascended up into heaven saying, this same Jesus as you see go, he's going to come again and someday he's going to come back and I want you to be ready and everyone you know and I want us to take as many with us to heaven as possible. That's the goal of this church. The vision statement is heaven living for things that are eternal, heavenly things, setting our affection on things above and not on the things of the earth. Our, 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 that's our vision statement. But our mission is to go to heaven and take as many with us as possible. And when we're talking about doing that, we're not talking about just getting people saved by the skin of their teeth. We're talking about raising up disciples, raising up, I win one and then I disciple that person who then goes and wins someone and disciples that person who then goes and wins someone and disciples that person. That's the hard work work but if we're too busy in this world living for the things of this kingdom of this world we're never going to influence or win someone to Jesus Christ so please hear me church I want to be a church that takes a lot of people to Jesus with us takes them to heaven with us but we've got to first show them with humility that we are all sinners in need of a savior Romans 3 23 all have sinned and come short of the glory of God Romans 5 8 but God showed his love that while we were yet sinners Christ gave his life he died for us he died for us and that the 6 23 says that that the wages of sin what we've earned what we do is death and word death there is eternal separation from God you see the gulf of sin I'm a sinner this is God in heaven right this, you know, I have to get from my sin to God. I've got to get to him. And Jesus is the one that bridges me there. And we need to be his hands and his feet and his eyes. And when we lay down our lives, we're Jesus to them. In a way, we're building a bridge through us, through our words, through our prayers, through our living, through our testimony, through our befriending, through, through like Pastor Zach, I believe he preached, talking about that, the, that people in the world know how to use money for influence. Why doesn't the church know how to do that? So buy people meals, have them over, give, use your money to influence people. So show them Jesus, show them love, show them kindness and generosity. Let them see Jesus in you. While they're sinners, just like God did, while they're sinners, that's what we want to do. So the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful for that. In Romans 6.23. So if we want to win someone to Jesus, we've got to get involved with the lives of people that are, don't know Jesus. And I ask you tonight, for those of you watching online and those of you that might be uh, watching this even weeks later, someone tells you about it, are you sure if you were to die, you'd go to heaven? Are you certain? Do you have a peace that you're going to go to heaven if you were to die. As you know that Jesus has forgiven your sins and that he's changed your heart. Does your heart desire to be like God? Does your heart desire the things of God? Does your heart go after the eternal things? Has your heart been changed? Has your thinking been changed to align it with God's word and God's truth? 
call on him and let's go and let's be a part of sharing this good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ with all that we know and bring sanctification, disciple them to become like the Lord so they too can lay their life down and be a bridge to others. You see, the world needs Jesus. The world needs Jesus. I started the church to be 30 years October 4. That Sunday we're celebrating. We moved our missions banquet to that Friday night as a part of our 30 year anniversary where missions is such a big part. We're gonna have that banquet on October 2, that Friday night, so mark your calendars. And when I started the church, my number one heartbeat, give them Jesus. Take as many to heaven as possible. Reach as many as possible. Love people to Jesus. Show them Jesus. Show them Jesus. Just to come here and have church together over and over and over, you see there's nobody here. <laughs> but you're there and you're still the church. You're still the church. You go into the world, you can pray. And listen, this whole virus thing, prudence is good, but don't let fear grip your heart. Use wisdom. But let people see that wisdom is balanced with love and kindness and, and there's no fear, you know, no fear. Jesus, I pray. Anyone in watching this message that doesn't know you, they would call on you, Jesus, you'd forgive their sins. And right now, Jesus, I pray you would invade their hearts, their thinking, their feeling. Change them. Let them see things differently. Let them feel differently. Give them a new desire. Let them have a kingdom mindset. The kingdom of God, Jesus said over and over, is like this and like this and like this and like this. And it looks nothing like this earthly, pleasure-filled world the way we live it. So change our heart. Give us a kingdom mindset to see that everything we are, everything we have, everything we've got, it's for you, Jesus. It's for you, Jesus, that we could... Do your work. Your meat, you said, when you were no longer hungry, when the disciples came back, the Samaritan woman at the well, you had brought her living water. She had found life everlasting and forgiveness of her sins. And you were no longer hungry, and you told your disciples, my meat is to do the will of the Father. And you were so full because someone had received eternal life through your love and gift, Jesus. And I pray we'd have that heartbeat. Why did you come? To seek and save the lost. You said it. Can we be the church? Can we be the church and not just have church? Can we go and make friends of new people? Love them. Bring them into our homes. Walk along. Be accused just like Jesus was of doing sinful things because we're hanging with sinners so that we can influence them and love them and show them their need of a Savior who is Jesus that could be the power of the Spirit to invade their heart and change them from ever, from darkness to light, from death to life. In Jesus' name we pray, from despair to hope, from fear to faith, to live for you, Jesus. Let us be a soul winning church. In Jesus' name we pray, because the world needs Jesus. Church, reach out to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus every day take him to this world love him lay down your life so that you can be a bridge from death to life from hell to heaven from self to Jesus you can show people they can indeed be free from sin and their heart totally changed that Jesus invades their heart changing how they feel how they think and how they see this world so that God's word is their standard this day forward. In Jesus' name, let's be the church. Let's do it. We may not be able to gather, but we can go. Amen. We can still be the church. Think about nations where people are forbidden. They're being killed because they're meeting, because of things that they do. We still have the freedom to witness. So let's do it. And let's believe God. Let's know that the Spirit lives in us and we can lay hands on the sick and they can recover. And let's be the church and let's see the, our greatest hour. Now this Wednesday, for this week, our activities are canceled, and then we'll go week by week. We don't know about next Sunday. I uh, don't see the governor changing the decree, but uh, we're available by phone. Pray with you. We're reaching out to you. Please, if you need anything we can do, call us if you would. 
and we thank you for being a great church and God bless you and thank you for being faithful and giving giving online or however you want to do that as we navigate this weird weirdness of this virus in Jesus name bless you God be with you we're signing off now bye bye